Hey everybody, how's it going? So, so, it's Monday. Okay, so um, we used to have a uh, mobile showcase back in the day. Um, after the reorg, we created a reading showcase. A discovery had its own showcase. We were like, well, let's merge these two things. Um, and then the question arose like, well, why don't we have reading, discovery, and editing all get together and do a showcase? So we're like, okay, let's give it a shot. Um, so this is our first attempt at doing that. Um, it may or may not go smoothly. Um, apologies if we have any issues and if it's a bit bumpy. Um, but these showcases are really meant to be informal. People come and show what they've been working on, either for their work work um, or for their like 10% time where they're doing research projects, which may or may not apply to media. Um, we're planning to use the etherpad that's attached to the meeting invitation for people to ask questions so we can actually get through more of this. So if you do a demo, um, hop in the etherpad after you're done with your demo and respond to questions inside of the etherpad. I don't know if we're gonna like break etherpad by having 100 people connect to it, but we'll see. Um, yeah, yeah, who knows? So um, we'll give that a shot. If you are presenting, um, there is uh, there's a connection up here. Like if you're presenting from the room, there's a connection up here. Um, you'll wanna come plug in and speak into this microphone. So I guess I will be the person probably holding the microphone up next to you. If you are speaking from this room, you'll just have to come up and do your, your uh, demo. If you're on, well, uh, whoever is speaking, that's like who gets recorded and who gets pre presented to everyone else. I would suggest if you are not presenting um, that you actually shut down your video right now, um, just because it results in higher, higher quality uh, video, generally speaking. So um, yeah, again, this is meant to be informal. So you know, you're here with people um, who are interested to hear what you're talking about. This is not a time to necessarily critique, judge. It's a time to just show off what you've been working on. So um, with that said, I think Yuri uh, was the first person actually to be doing a demo. Is Yuri on the line? Yes. OK, I'm going to mute my mic. I am on the line. Can you guys see me and hear me okay? Yeah, go for it. All right, I'm about to share my entire screen. Okay. Can you see my screen now? I hope you can. I need some feedback. All good? Yes. Okay, excellent. Okay, so I've been working on maps and graphs for a while, and this is the very first little result that I want to share with you. Um, just uh, two days ago, um, mobile team launched their browser, their browser, uh, sorry, browser uh, Android app with the maps support in it. And we see a major spike in the blue line. Uh, I'm sorry, green line. Green line is what shows how many unique users we have. And as you can see, we're now up to uh, about 1.3 million tiles a day. Not that much, really, but we can. Uh, the, the servers are totally taking it. They're like about two percent usage. Now, the interesting stuff. I've been working on maps on an uh, interesting um, maps uh, plugin extension to allow users to insert maps into their into the pages. So as you can see here, we have like a green area with a phone zone, and you see a museum, like exploratorium, blah 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 blah, and you can even have something more fun like. I don't know, you know, the cats, it's always fun. Uh, you can play a video here. Um, uh, it actually plays classical music when you click on it. Um, next on, this is how it's actually done. It's actually very simple. Uh, maps, uh, there's a, oops, oh, nothing is important. I probably shouldn't interrupt. Um, uh, map tag is inserted. Uh, you just specify, I want the map of this size at this coordinates, make it interactive. And then here you just write standard GeoJSON with styling in it. Uh, it's not perfect at this point, but it shows the potential. Um, also allows something more interesting like this with like uh, hiding everything else out and just showing uh, some useful uh, points of interest for the WikiVoyage style. WikiVoyage actually is a big, uh, big, uh, target for this and because of them they like we can allow multiple type of maps like you just define different groups see it says like right here group a group b 
and you say here show the full map here show just the map with group a or these groups whatever now switching to the graphs graphs are actually live and have been live for almost a year now this is this old style graphs this is what people have been creating like there's a graph chart template that you can use to spec uh, to draw some basic graphs uh there's also maps that's all old news and you can already use it but now we have new stuff well this is another pie chart people people have been playing with pie charts um, for different classes but the fun stuff is uh, something i just did recently uh, because of the page view api uh, you can now draw graphs like this like usage of the main page a viewing of the page, main page or of the current page or whatever or you can do interactive graphs something like click to play uh, thanks for Joy uh, to Joanne and Moise for helping with this and making it much nicer and cleaner interface. And you can say, oh, just zoom in into this area or that area, or uh, show me the map of the United States and show all the flights, how they connect with the cities. And you can see, oh, this is how, this is where all the flights go, like from Ankara or I hope this is Ankara. Um, or something like this. This is my other favorite graph where uh, like uh, family size versus uh, fertility rate, uh, rate uh, versus life expectancy. And you can play with it and see how the, these things are done. And I am done. Thank you very much. Stop sharing. Thanks, Yuri. Um, it looks like our next demo is on the guided path dialog. Is that in the office or online? Um, that's, can you hear me? Yep. Um, yeah, so I'm remote. Um, I'll just share my screen with you. Uh, I, I seem to have to add an extension. Can I? Use your screen sharing. Just a sec. Sorry. Ah, here we go. Can you see my screen? Not yet. How about now? Yes. OK. All right, so in Visual Editor, um, as well as simply editing text, um, you can edit more exciting things, for example, math equations. Um, <clears throat> there are a bunch of extensions, different types of nodes that you can insert. Um, and to show you what the old math editor looked like, I'm going to give you an example with hieroglyphics. Um, there are basically automatic editors when you click on a node such as this um, and you simply have um, an input box and if you if you know the syntax um, of the thing that you're editing then you can just um, type away and edit it um, however if you're not familiar with the syntax then you're kind of on your own now um, so we thought with maths we would try to improve on that um, the syntax behind uh, editing a maths equation is LaTeX. Um, and here is what the new dialog looks like. Okay. Um, all right. So let's say I want to add a new equation. Um, or a new formula, let's say, sum of x. There we go. That was easy. I knew what to write there. Um, so I just typed just as before. Um, now let's say, actually, no, I don't want to do sum of x. I want to do sum of log of x. Sorry. <clears throat> However, I don't know how to write log. Um, now I have this handy menu down here, and I can find the log button. Ah, that's how we write log. There we go, sum of log of x. Um, so basically, this menu uh, has a whole bunch of buttons, different symbols that you can insert. Um, some of them are simple, like the, the log one. 
um, simply inserts the command. Um, some of them do something a little bit more exciting. What if I wanted to do log base x? Well, then I can highlight the x, click on this one, log base x of y, and that one. Um, so the idea is that someone who either is not very familiar with LaTeX or is familiar with LaTeX but doesn't know every single command that they and, uh, could possibly need, they won't have to look it up, they can just use this menu. Um, in addition, uh, we also have some amount of um, error notification. You can see if you've typed something that was incorrect. Um, and we have more exciting layouts down at the bottom. Um, let's say we want to enter a simple matrix. And then we can just edit everything. Um, there are other things you can do with a math node other than inputting the formula. You can um, change how it displays. And so we have an options tab as well. And we can give it an ID as well. Um, and that's the new math dialog. And that pretty much concludes what I have to say. Okay, cool. All right, um, next up we have uh, Rowan on crosswick notifications. Um, we only have like a, a Mac up here. So like, I guess the option would probably be to go to another room. Yeah. Um, you wanna give that a shot? You wanna wait yeah. out until after the next pres presenter? Okay, this is, this is how we do it. Okay, hang tight, Rowan is sprinting right now. Okay, it looks like we have a Roan. Um, you're muted at the moment, but we do see your video. Oh, yeah. Okay, I was muted there. All right. Um, I'm going to try to share my screen here. Uh, can you guys see my screen now? Yes. Yes. Awesome. Okay, so... Um, I'm going to do a quick demo of what we're working on in the collaboration team um, where we have a redesign of the notification panel all, almost ready to roll out. Um, and that looks like this. Um, ignore the Chrome rendering bug. I'm working on that. I swear it's a bug in Chrome. Um, we have um, some new uh, UI stuff uh, to do with notifications that we're gonna be rolling out very soon. But the exciting thing that I wanted to show was that um, I have a three wiki set up on this laptop. And if I go over here, it will show me that I have messages from a different wiki. And it will show me notifications about things that happened on other wikis. And if I go and thank um, myself from a different account on a different wiki, then I will Hopefully, now see that I thank myself for my edit. Uh, so that's that. That's um, cross speaking notifications. Um, I should not take credit for any of this. The UI work was done by Moriel, and uh, the back end work was mostly done by Canal. Uh, and this will be coming to Wiki near you in a month or so. Right. Awesome. Right. Awesome.
Just a second while we get set up. Installing an extension. Never mind. Okay. Okay. We're good to go. All right. Here you go. Hello. So this is something that the discovery team has been investigating um, a little bit last week. Uh, and I go to the portal page, the top 10 wikis order is basically based on a, on a week worth of page views. So um, it's, it's uh, sorted by the, the like, last week page, page views or like whenever we pull the stats, um, week long of stats of page views and that's what determines the order. What, what, what we think is this, this is, while this is nice, this is a bit dumb for, for most users, because everybody is very familiar with English Wikipedia, so it works for all of us. But if, if you're in a much smaller country or you don't speak English, um, you, you might never be interested in going to the English Wikipedia. So the, the idea is we can read na navigator languages, um, which are the user's preferred languages. And we can try to eventually um, find um, that there is a wiki for for your preferred language and, and try to, to put it um, more prominent on the page. So based on the navigator languages and, and here, the, this navigator preferred languages are just English. So it actually doesn't change anything on the page. But on, on my personal computer, since I'm French, I actually have English and French. And so for me, if, if I go here, see English on the top left and French on the top right. So put some examples. And for example, somebody in, in Hawaii, um, if, if he wants to see first the, the websites in, in Hawaii and second in English, uh, that's when uh, that's how the page uh, could look like for him. And somebody in Catalonia in Spain would eventually see the Catalan a wiki and the Spanish wiki before uh, anything else. Same thing for, uh, for example, somebody in Ukraine who would like to see in Ukrainian and, and Russian or somebody in, in India. Um, so what we noticed is um, based on stats that we collect, 60% uh, of people that go to that page don't do anything. And 30% of the people actually search something on that page and 10% will, will click on a link. Um, so this is a way to actually increase that 10% uh, rate. And yeah, I would like to, to, to get feedback from everyone. And, and eventually this is something that we could we could run an A-B test for a week and, and see if it, if it improves something for the user experience. That's it. Okay, so next, um, a better type ahead on portals. Yep. Um, can everybody hear me? We can hear you. Oh, you can, good. Cool. So uh, yeah, I'm Jan, and uh, along with Julian, also been working on the attic, uh, on the portal. Sorry, Chrome is saying I have to add an extension to share my screen. Um, okay, has been added entire screen. Okay, and as uh, Julian said, we do want to increase engagement on the portal page, and one of the things. Uh, that Julian is tackling is the languages. We already have uh, 
a better kind of more prominent search bar to maybe help people, you know, search for stuff. Oh, I gave it away. And, and today I'll be showing you the better type ahead on the search page, which is similar to the mobile uh, page. So if I type in Star Wars, you have the thumbnail along with the title and the description of the of the wiki. Uh, so this has been I'm working on here. Be cool, um, as opposed to what it is right now, which is just just the uh, title of the thing you're searching for. And this is also very similar to the mobile uh, Wikipedia. Uh, we styled it a little bit for consistency as well. And here we go. And uh, hopefully this will go in an A-B test and we'll see if it actually does improve the conversion rate of the, of the search as well. So, yeah, that is Twitter type ahead stuff. Okay. And that's the better type ahead stuff. Okay, thanks. Um, next up, GeoSearch over a bounding box. Hey. Hi, we hear you and see your screen. Excellent. So actually what I'm talking about is not ready to show you how it's working. I'm just telling you that I'm getting close to making a commit on a feature that will allow us to search not around a certain point, but within a bounding box. This could make it easier for apps, for example, to display points of interest uh, uh, in a shape that more resembles a phone screen which is has one side larger than the other one. So yeah, expect more very soon. Okay, thanks. Uh, Tillman section usage data. Okay, trying to screen share. Can you hear me? We hear you. Awesome. Yeah, so I want to briefly show um, some new type of data on what people are reading on Wikipedia. Um, small thing, but I think it's pretty interesting. Um, this is a byproduct of work we did on mobile web with John Robson. So on mobile web, as you know, um, you see the article and the subsequent sections are collapsed. So you have to click on to expand on a section of the index. So this is the World War II article. And it's pretty long. And so um, we instrumented this. We have an um, event for uh, the open and close um, as actions. First thing we found out is that um, only about 40% of readers open a section. 60% are happy with only the lead section, apparently. Tillman, can I interrupt you for just a second? Sure. Are you uh, sharing your screen? You're not seeing my screen? OK. OK, I'll try again. Um, 
I did not know you need the extension. I'm sorry. So that's installing now. I uh, just keep talking while it's trying to install. Okay, thanks. Um, okay, so. Um, <laughs> Tillman, are you still there? Okay, it looks like we may need to switch to the next presentation while Tillman gets reset. Uh, okay, uh, looks like Eric to the bottom of the list, James. Single edit tab. Just a second to set up. Hello. Oh, good heavens. Uh, that zoom level is a little small. That's the moment. Uh, is there any chance we could get the video feed bump from 400 pixels? I'm sure it's somewhere here. Uh, it looks okay. You could just. It's not okay. Go to ahead. Vector. There's, there's enough. Of co there's enough content on the screen. No content on the screen. All you're seeing is system preferences. Uh, before there was. That's a bit better. Okie dokie. All right. OK, so Visual Editor has existed for a little while now. And ever since the beginning, uh, we added a hack to MediaWiki to totally disrupt user experience and add a second edit tab which is incredibly ugly, incredibly ugly. We, in fact, broke uh, Apple's um, scraping of our content by adding a second edit tab to sections, which was unfortunate. And um, it's been plagued by misery and pain and sadness. And we've always wanted to get rid of it um, for several reasons, most notably because presenting users with two buttons that do basically the same thing is a bad service to our users, and it's a sign that our services um, and we now feel we're getting towards the point where it's ready to provide that switch. And so we've now created a single edit tab. So one wiki with two edit tabs magically becomes one wiki with one edit tab. And then, uh, and so this edit button will do one of two things. It will either take you to the visual editor or the wiki text editor based on your preferences. So if I click edit, I've got it set up um, by default for new users to take them to the wiki text editor. And um, it then prompts you with this dialogue, which is being reworked language-wise. Um, but it says, hey, you know, ooh, I like um, you to remember for me. So if I click Edit again, it will uh, just open the wiki editor. But if I switch, it switches into the visual editor. And then if I click Edit another time, it will again load the visual editor. And this also applies to section edit links. And if I then click on the old version of the page and click edit, this will also work. But if I do something that we don't currently support, like I want to undo that edit, we'll go, ugh, we don't know how to fix that. And so we dump you into the Wikitex editor, um, currently slightly inelegantly, but in the future it'll be pretty promise. And um, you're still able to do uh, switching back and forth between uh, edits as you go. 
he says making a change you can't actually see switching into visual editor i changed this thing uh there honest anyway that's everything thank you very much thank you all right okay um michael Michael for getting video back up. Okay, ready. Michael, we're only hearing clicks and pops over here. <clears throat> and a throat clearing. Okay, do you read me? Yes. Okay, and can you see the uh, emulator? Yes. Okay, and is it clear? It is in the room, yes. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, so I wanted to show the pop-up integrating Wiktionary content, which is uh, one of the Android team's Q2 goals and what I've been working on the last sprint. So um, to, to get right into it, let's say I'm reading about a Tetra quark and I uh, want to know what some of the words mean. Um, so I'll highlight the word in addition to where we have the copy and share menu items, uh, there will now be a define uh, menu item in the context menu. I'm just using the Creative Commons icon as a placeholder for now. Uh, Katie's uh, created a define icon that we're going to put in uh, probably this afternoon. And so I'll click on that and I'll get a pop up uh, based on the same component as the uh, link preview. It's a native component. Everything in here is native, uh, no web view, and it'll just give me uh, a stripped down version of the Wiktionary content. Um, yeah, so let's say I want to know the meaning of valence. Um, now I've got uh, all the definitions for the current language I'm, I'm browsing in from Wiktionary for this word. So we have a bunch of noun definitions, some with examples where available. Um, looks like another group of nouns with a different sense. Um, just to give you a sense of what's going on on the back end, this is built on the content service. And um, ultimately what it's doing is the content service is requesting the Parsoid HTML, uh, getting it back, and then stripping a whole lot of stuff away and just sending a, a really minimal, minimal JSON uh, response to the mobile client, with, which basically only contains what you see here. So uh, it's getting this stuff really efficiently. Um, and uh, that's that. Um, if there are any questions, I'm happy to answer them. Thanks. Let's take the questions to the etherpad. OK, uh, Tillman, do you want to give it another try? Okay, looks like Tillman has dropped off. Eric. All right, sure. Let me set up a screen share here. Is that coming across? Yes. So we, uh, Within search, we've been working on uh, replacing or coming up with a replacement for the autocomplete. Currently, the autocomplete feature that you see on wikis in the top right corner here is always a pre-strict prefix search, which means if you misspell something or, or anything like that, you basically just don't get any suggestions. So this Thursday, we're shipping out a, a new beta feature called the completion suggester. It'll show up on your, your beta features and you just turn it on with a click. And uh, it basically, it it allows you to, so we were to type in like queen on the left side here, I have the old prefix search. So if you were to do queen, you get a strict list. This is also a, there's not much scoring going on there. It's just uh, putting things up. Uh, if we do it with the new completion suggester, I guess there's two new things with this. One is that it handles uh, fuzziness, which I'll show in a moment. It also handles scoring a bit better and better in that we can, we can generate scores for all these things. And then we sort them based on those generated scores. Uh, the scoring algorithm is still going to need a bit of work, 
but uh, it pulls up things that are quite interesting, like Queen Elizabeth, Queen the Band, Queen's University, whereas Queen on the prefix search. Uh, also interesting, there's there's some other ones that, uh, like Quirkus Rober probably should not be the top result for, for anything, except unless you really type that. Uh, some other demos, though, if you were to type something wrong, like if you were to type Green Day, but without a space between the green and the day, it'll still find the uh, Green Day. Even if you uh, drop a letter out of there and you misspell it, we're still going to find uh, the things that you're looking for. Uh, and so we're hoping this is going to help people to, to find things a little bit better. Uh, this is uh, one of the reasons we haven't done too much with this in the past is that uh, performance is a, is a serious concern for this. We do something like 100 million prefix searches per day based on this. Uh, this is a graph from Elasticsearch for somebody that was working on adjusting this. And uh, we can see the completion suggester can actually be more performant than prefix search can be. Uh, that's because this is based entirely on an in-memory algorithm called a finite state transducer. Uh, I won't get too much into it, but I'll post a link to a blog post that explains how that all works if anybody's curious. This is kind of what the data structure looks like internally. It's a directed a graph. But uh, yeah, that's our new completion suggester. It'll be coming out uh, on Thursday, hopefully. We're fully expecting to anyways, and uh, and hopefully it'll uh, help people find things a little bit better. Okay, very cool. Thanks, everybody, for doing your demos. We will get this out onto YouTube and Commons after a bit. Um, if you did do a demo or if you have a question, um, please add details to the showcase on the Etherpad. And I think we can actually wrap early, which is not something we can always do. Thanks again. Have a good day.